my mother's Palestinian. Uh, we are a long, many generations mm. back, Jerusalemite family. The way we identify is often Jerusalemite first and then Palestinian. Um, and we have extended family who are in Gaza. They are sheltering in a church. Um, it's a church complex, so uh, at first I thought they were sort of in the church itself, but actually, you know how a church has Sunday school rooms and whatever, they're in one of them with other families as well. Um, they can't move. Um, two of them are very frail, a bit old, and they're also frozen in fear, because what is very clear uh, is that there is nowhere in Gaza that is safe. They are being told to move, they know they have been told it's, to it's move, dangerous but well, it's it? dangerous yeah. to move. And, and the, the route to get from the north to the south was also bombed. So even the process of moving isn't safe. So that's where they are. Um, in the West Bank, I will also point out, whilst all eyes are on Gaza mm. and rightly mm. so, the situation in the West Bank is getting worse day on day. Um, there's been effective lockdown between the different Palestinian communities. So, for example, if you're a, a teacher in Bethlehem wanting to come to a school and teach in Jerusalem, the, the checkpoints are now such that it takes sort of two and a half hours to get through. You can't leave the car or less you risk being shot at. Um, and uh, it basically means that the economy is grinding to a halt. But what it means for my family, who are spread between Jerusalem, Ramallah and Jericho, is that they can't be together yeah, either. So, so, I mean, this is, this is problematic on a, on a very personal level. But on a, you know, what do we do now? Um, I should say, I, I want to see the back of Hamas too. I absolutely mm. do. And in terms of supporting Israeli, the Israeli aim to get rid of Hamas, we can support that. But the, the weakness, Tim, isn't the weakness of Hamas. It's the weakness of the Palestinian people yeah. to be able to in any way get away from this. You know, my family don't have British passports. The, the reason I do is because of my father. Um, they can't get out. And they are, you know, you saw what happened in that refugee camp. I, I don't believe that they are safe where they are. And I, I'm not sure if tomorrow morning I'm going to be able to say what I said this morning in answer to the question of how are they, which is alive. I, I think I'm lucky to be able to say that. I was with someone yesterday um, who had lost 51 members of their family. 51, can you imagine? I mean, it, it, this is devastation. And so when we are talking about, you know, de-escalation and ceasefires and actually the sentiment we need to get to here is how do we get through this? And how do we get through this in a way where we don't just revert back to, you know, successive conflicts like this and this is existential for us too this is incredibly triggering you know many of the people who are in that refugee camp are refugees it's a refugee camp they are refugees themselves and my grandmother is in her mid-90s she is being completely re-triggered by everything that is happening now and there is a powerful cross narrative of history that by the way is both true from the israelis and the palestinians where one is so their independence was our Nakba. You know, it, we have to now get to a point wow. where we move forward together. And the only way, in my view, to move forward is two states. So we cannot lose sight of that. It is incredibly important.